Hello everybody. Today, we're going to be making another blast mini Mount St. Helen. We'll be using zinc, sulfur, and potassium chlorate. I thought you're going to say potassium permanganate. Well, true, that is another strong oxidizer, but potassium chlorate will make it much more explosive. And we want explosive, right? Yes. Okay, so the principle here is just the zinc reacting with the sulfur forms a lot of heat, fire, or light, and a yellow-green flame and forms a whole bunch of zinc sulfide. Why I'm using this fella, even though this guy's not in any chemical reactions, this guy will make our reaction more explosive. And it's what we want, right? Exciting! Mm -hmm. Now, you might wonder, why out of all those volcanoes that exist, why I chose Mount St. Helens? The fun fact about it is that 50 years ago, when it erupted, it actually blew up the top part away. Blew from the pit. So, we decided to replicate it and make an explosive reaction. Explosive? Mm-hmm. Now, let's make our explosive volcano mixture. <laughs> so... Dangerous. Well, it's actually quite safe as long as you're ready for all the dangers involved. First off, we gotta mix zinc and sulfur. Can I mix it? Well, let me show you how to mix it. So, now here, you gotta need two cups because you wanna mix it like this. This is actually how you mix two reactive powders. Because obviously, we don't want the volcano to go bang in here, right? Yeah. So, this is the best way to mix the two powders. I think sulfur is solid. Mm hmm, it's a solid. A fun fact about sulfur is that even if some people say that rotten egg smells are because of sulfur, sulfur is actually odorless. I know. It sounds funny, but it's actually because a sulfur compound known as hydrogen sulfide it makes a smell. Hydrogen sulfide is also what makes Yellowstone National Park smell like rotten eggs. Now we have our very explosive volcano mixture already. Explosive? Mm -hmm. Let's mix it with the chlorate outside in, because it easily lights on fire. See you on the backyard explosion. 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 Ready? Ready. Okay. See you in the backyard. Bye. Let's go. Okay. So, Ryan, are you ready for the volcano mixture? Yes. First off, here is our mini Mount St. Helens. Yep. Now, we're going to make a jungle. Squish this cup in on top, I guess. Now, note that you have to add the chlorate outside right before you blast it with a torch because sulfur makes potassium chlorate heat less stable and because of that it could spontaneously ignite so always think of that when you're doing the experiment okay ready prepare for everything Ready for the torch? Go! Whoa! It is awesome! I hope you guys like it. See you in the explanation. Bye! Look at dry all, subscribe and like!
Now, before we look at our explanation, feel free to comment on more booms or if it looks like a volcano or not, because it did look like a volcano to me. Now, before we look at our reactions, let's see why sulfur doesn't have an odor. The real culprit of the smell of sulfur is a gas known as hydrogen sulfide with the chemical formula H2S. H2S is a very toxic, bad smelling, and colorless gas. It is the one that's responsible for all those rotten eggs you know, sulfur gets blamed for and is formed when hydrogen and sulfur react together. Note that hydrogen in, is found in trace amounts in the air we breathe. Now, let's look at our two requirements for smell. Number one is, does it release any vapor? Two, does it release a detectable amount? For example, if you take sulfur or metals, which are often blamed for their smell, they actually don't release any vapor. So, the first question, does it release any vapor, we're going to no, and therefore sulfur and metals are odorless. But then you might wonder, well, what if it did release vapor? Well, then you're going to go to the second question. For example, if you took something very volatile like say alcohol, then you'd say, does it release any vapor? Yes. Does it release a detectable amount? Yes. This is why alcohols have a very strong odor. However, some substances such as say mercury metal does release some vapor, but it doesn't release barely enough for us to smell any. Which is why Mercury, despite its toxicity, doesn't have any bad odor. Now let's look at our reactions. The reaction was between zinc metal, or metal, of course, and sulfur, or non-metal. When the two combine, they form a compound known as zinc sulfide. <coughs> Note that the dust is something you should absolutely never ever breathe in. Also, there is also some sulfur powder floating around too, and that could potentially react with hydrogen and form hydrogen sulfide, or form explosive mixtures in air. Another reaction that was happening was a potassium chlorate's decomposition. When heated above around 400 degrees, it decomposes to potassium chloride, which is a salt substitute and oxygen. The oxygen is the one that intensifies the fire. It may react with some of the sulfur, which was found in excess, and forms sulfur dioxide gas. Like hydrogen sulfide, it is very toxic and has an odor similar to that of a fresh lead match. And then, let's see how the aluminum became this white crumbly thing. In intense heat, aluminum, like every single metal in the whole world, gets oxidized easily because reactions like this one get sped up when the temperature goes up, if there's the higher concentration of reactants, or if there's a catalyst. In our case, the temperature is what's causing this to happen. Four aluminum metal atoms react with three oxygen gas molecules and forms two aluminum oxide molecules. So, all of that white stuff there is probably aluminum oxide. Thanks for watching and see you in our next videos. Bye, and I hope you liked it.